Howdy folks and good morning. It is 6 a.m. right now. About to head off to work as you can see by my breath that you can see that which means it's cold outside. It's currently 9 degrees. It's 9 degrees outside and I want to show you how well the Fiesta starts. Of course a four-cylinder gasoline engine starts in 9 degrees. I know that's nothing to uh, that's nothing to some of the people up north but to a southern boy 9 degrees is not something to be um, to laugh off. It's uh, pretty cold. The Fiesta is a 2014 model. I uh, purchased it in 2013 and it's on the original battery still. So four years old now. So let's go ahead and clutch in, brake on, and let's see how she starts. Because again, it is gasoline powered, so it shouldn't be an issue. There we go. No problem whatsoever. Because again, gasoline technology is uh, pretty impressive when it comes to cold weather. Now let's talk about diesel. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday. It's a balmy 14 degrees outside here in Tennessee. So it's, what is that outside of the United States? Uh, about negative 10, negative 9, negative 10 Celsius. So a little bit chilly, a little bit chilly. And today we're going to be starting up the F-250, the 7.3 liter 1997 F-250. See how she runs because uh, it's not been run for a couple days and it's been sitting outside this entire time and it got down to single digits Fahrenheit. Okay, I'm do my best here to show you the all activities, but I got some normal key. Nothing special about that. And we want that glow plug in there. There we go. Way to start. That's a glow plug going off there and heating up the combustion chamber. Let that go here. And because I don't have a heater block or a block heater, I don't have a block heater in my F-250 because this is a Southern truck. Usually you don't need them. I'm gonna cycle that. I'm gonna cycle those uh, little glow plugs twice here. We'll see. We'll see if that gets her started. The glow plugs only work for well while the lights on, pretty much. All right, let's see how she how she starts. Almost. Okay. Let's give that glow plug a third a third try here. Let's try again. Try again. Ha ha! There we go. Now, unfortunately, it's too dark to really show you the plume of exhaust gases, but there is. There are definitely going to be some plume of uh, white exhaust gases right now from a bunch of unburnt fuel that got shot into the cylinders. But she's running her right now. Uh, give about two, three, four minutes or so for the turbo to warm up and everything before I really get set off on my day, though. Okay, now it's currently about 23 degrees outside, so not super cold, but it did get down about seven last night. The deuce has not been started in about a month, month and a half or so. I've already put the crossover for the battery on there, so the battery is on, ready to go. Now, I did see a squirrel jump out from underneath the engine in the engine compartment and run up the tree. So I'm going to go ahead and check. Well, I'm going to go and check anyway. But I want to make especially sure that the squirrel has not been eating anything or been storing nuts somewhere that shouldn't have. Okay, everything looks pretty good here. No problems whatsoever. Horns all loose, like always. Check the oil. When oil in it, that's good. Of course, not the correct way to check the oil. It should be warm when you check the oil in reality. But it doesn't just tell me that it's got oil in it. Okay. I'm going to turn on the ignition. Headphone check, if you've got your headphones on, dial down the audio right now. Oh, almost. Now, each of those engines responded to cold weather very differently. So let's take a look at why that is. 
First of all, let's start off with the Fiesta. The Fiesta has a 1.6 liter gasoline engine with a compression ratio of 11 to one. So basically it is set up for being very reliable starting in cold weather. Now, gasoline itself is not foolproof, but it does not gel. It does start to freeze at around 70 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. That is something that the Southerner here will never have an issue with. Now, if you get up north, you know, into Canada or very close to Canada in the Arctic conditions, then you do have an issue where you have to plug in your car with a block heater. Even if it's a gasoline engine, you plug in your car with a block heater and that will keep it from freezing up and you can start it in the morning. But down in the south, you will not find a car with that installed unless it's been driven from the north down. Now, at this point, you're asking, Deuce, why do you have a bottle of Mountain Dew there and all these glasses? Well, I'm gonna use these glasses and this bottle of Mountain Dew as a demonstration of the compression ratios that we're dealing with with all three of these engines. So first of all, we'll start off with the Fiesta. Fiesta is 11 to one. Let's say each cylinder is this two liter bottle here and you're gonna compress this two liters down 11 to one. So everybody knows what a, uh, <laughs> everybody knows what a two liter bottle is, how, how big that is. So if it's 11 to one, let me get out my, handy dandy TI-85. I bought this in 1994 and I paid about 120 bucks for it. And now you can go online and buy one also for about 120 bucks. I, I don't understand that. The only technology that has not gotten cheaper and better over time. Okay, so now a two liter bottle has 67.6 .6 ounces in it. So 67.6, .6. we're gonna divide that by 11 and we got six point uh, let's just say uh, 6.15, 6.1-ish ounces. Oh, six and about a dash. There we go. So that's 6.1 ounces right there for the Fiesta. So we're going to basically compress this two liter bottle into this glass, this amount right there. And that's your 11 one compression. Now let's talk about the 7.3 liter diesel engine that had or diesel engines in general diesel engines do not have spark plugs the gasoline is ignited in a gas engine by the spark plug you need air fuel and spark well diesel engines don't need the spark you need air and fuel and well it needs compression so as long as you have compression as long as the engine is actually running correctly then you're going to have the compression regardless of the air or the or the fuel so the way the 7.3 liter is set up is that in cold weather it has glow plugs. Almost every diesel engine out there has some form of glow plugs or like the Cummins diesel engines, they have a glow, well, a heater plate. Um, I'm sure there's some sort of fancy term for it, but it has a heater plate that heats the air going into the engine. Glow plugs heat up the combustion chamber itself. So the 7.3 liter, as you saw, I had to cycle the glow plugs three times because well, number one, the relay and the glow plugs are old. Well, the relay is fairly new. It's only about five years old. The glow plugs are original from 1997. They are probably a little tired. But one of the advantages of a diesel engine is the fact you have this incredible compression ratio. The 7.3 liter has a 17.5 to one compression. That's, that's pretty hefty. That is pretty hefty. So let's see, let's do the math on that here. And we get 3.86 ounces. So I'm just gonna guesstimate that here. But 3.8, so we got three, three, see 3.8. So I'm gonna, this is a little bit too much. There we go. Okay, my truck was built and sold in the South. Actually it was sold to a guy in Georgia and that's who I bought it from. So it was originally designed for the South and it does not have a block heater installed. Now I can install one if I wanted to, but you saw this was the worst experience of me starting it this year so far. And it's probably gonna be the worst all year why would I drain the entire coolant and put in a block heater when it's a one-time occurrence once a year? It's not a big deal to me. Alrighty, now it's time to talk about the deuce and a half. If you notice, the deuce and a half started very, very well. And what's really cool about the deuce and a half is that there are no glow plugs. There is no heater plate. There is no block heater. There is an ether start system, but I did not use that on this occasion. I basically just made sure that the fuel was circulating through the lines and I started it up. You saw that. That was the first time I've been started for about a month. Now, I have started it in the cold weather before when I had sat for several months and it was a hard start then. But this time around, all I did was my three normal uh, check starts to make sure that the engine was not hydrolocked. And then I turned on the engine, turned on the fuel 
and went ahead and started her and it started like a top. It ran just perfect. Now, the reason why that a deuce and a half starts so well, even in cold weather a lot of times, is because of its incredible compression ratio, which is why I'm doing this demonstration right here. Now, my particular deuce and a half is equipped with an LDT 465 engine, and uh, that has a compression ratio of 22 to one. And the very reason why the deuce and a half is equipped with a 22 to one compression ratio is because it is not a diesel engine. It's a compression engine. It operates just like a diesel engine, but it really was designed to burn anything. And of course you can run JP-8, which is what the military runs on them right now. You can run, um, let's see, gasoline, you can run alcohol, you can run motor oil, you can run kerosene, you know, all those things on there. But unfortunately, the, the further it's designed to burn best, to run best on diesel. And the further you go from the characteristics of diesel, the worse your engine is going to be. So, you know, I, I actually have an entire video right there is a link to the entire video of my different fuels for a deuce and a half video. So go ahead and take a look at that if you haven't seen that already. But let's measure out that 22 to one compression ratio here. That is right at, that's a shade over three ounces, but it's 3.07. So I'm just gonna give it three. So there we have it right there. It doesn't look like a lot of difference between the 22 to one and 17 to one, but a little bit goes a long way, and I might not have measured that correctly 100%. But the reason I want to talk about the compression ratio of the deuce and a half is because that is usually the downfall. This is the downfall of the deuce and a half's engine. They usually don't wear out. I mean, everything that has moving parts will wear out eventually, but the downfall of the deuce and a half's engine isn't that it wears out, it's that some knucklehead gets behind the wheel and puts the thing to red line the entire time and just, oh yeah, it can be driven at 65 miles an hour, no problem, all day long. And it will take that for a while, but that incredible compression ratio, the engine wasn't really designed to be at a high RPM at that compression ratio. That's just hammering. That's hammering against all the rods and bearings and everything. You don't want to lug the engine either. You want to keep it somewhere between uh, 2200 RPM and 1300 RPM basically. So that's that's where you want to keep it at. I originally envisioned myself using a, uh, a different libation, an, an adult beverage, but then I started doing the math, especially when I was going to show the Fiesta's compression ratio. And there's only one time in, in my past that I can remember drinking that much. And that was for, that was to send off Battlestar Galactica on its final episode. Now, if you have your own tips and tricks about getting your vehicle started in a cold morning, go ahead and leave that in the comment box below the video because I would love to hear other people's techniques of getting your vehicle started, especially those guys up north. Well, guys, that's it for me today. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a like and go up subscribe. A lot more is on the way. And if you have any comments, questions, or show ideas, go ahead and leave that in the comment box below the video. And as always, you guys have a great day. See ya.